Call to order the uh, Policy Resolution and Legislation Committee. Um, our first item is approval of the minutes, minutes from October 14th, 2019. So moved. Second. First and a second questions, adjustments, comments. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right, legislative updates. Um, three items um, that I thought were noteworthy here. The first was it's kind of a continuation of a discussion we had last time regarding the temporary, uh, not temporary, but extending licensure to, um, to different groups of people. And this one has to do with um, the DPI finalized a permanent rule that creates a license pathway for educators who are spouses of military personnel. So converting what had been a temporary emergency regulation into a permanent rule, DPI has established uh, conditions under which the spouse of active duty military personnel may obtain a tier two educator license in Wisconsin. Um, the two qualifications are the applicant holds a valid teacher, pupil service, or administrator license from another state, and the applicant can provide verification of the applicant's spouse currently um, current military orders and a copy of either their marriage license or the military ID card. So another opportunity to mm -hmm. help with the shortage um, Because of they move so often that being licensed in all these different states is I assume, yeah, yeah, it must be. So, yeah. Makes sense. Seems logical and strange that it hadn't happened before, but one right. of those things, right? All right, uh, the second one I, I, I thought was interesting just given the social implications of this going on right now. Um, and it was really recognition by um, the, the WASB group of thanking the Albany School Board President, Steve Elliott, um, who testified at a public hearing um, regarding a bill that was in support of raising the smoking age to 21 for, for smoking and vaping. And I, I hadn't thought about that connection personally between school board duties and something such as that but when you, I start you know thinking about the stories that I hear of you know kids in school vaping and doing all this stuff um, it was I, I thought it was just uh, noteworthy to bring here and it says um, while Steve's board has not taken an official position on the bill and he was testifying as an individual he did provide legislators with a valuable perspective on the bill from a school board member they also legislators also heard testimony from several school principals during the hearing and now have a much better idea of the impacts uh, this bill will have on keeping tobacco nicotine and vaping products out of schools and out of the hands of young students um, and there was some some more commentary around this I guess I haven't realized how many of these things or devices they say are disguised as like school utensils for lack of a better mm. word. USB drive, it looks like yeah. a USB drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And I, when I had seen this, I, I asked my, my kids about it. I'm like, okay, so what am I, what mm -hmm. am I missing? Should I be looking in your backpack here for something that sure looks, dad. yeah, exactly. And and they looked at me, they're like, well, yeah, you don't realize this. I'm like, no, what, what are you talking about? They're like, oh yeah, you know, this is a vape and this is a jewel and this is a God knows what, and I was a little disturbed that they knew all the details of this, but then we got past it, and apparently it's just from osmosis, because I guess it's fairly prevalent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, interestingly enough, today I just read an article in my, in my day job, there have been 39 confirmed deaths now from vaping, mm -hmm. um, and obviously thousands of injuries. They do think they have a link now on a connection to the physical issues, it has to do with the, a vitamin E subset or something like mm -hmm. that that's mm -hmm. reacting in the... Mm -hmm. yeah. In the respiratory system, but nonetheless, you know, obviously, anything we can do to keep it out, mm -hmm. the better. So, that was that was it on that one. And then the last week of October, the Senate Education Committee had been reviewing and voting on a number of items. Um, they didn't provide a ton of detail on these, so I don't know if we hit um, or if if anyone here has more information. But there is a parent parental choice program. Um, equalization aid, charter education, suicide prevention grants, timing of equalization aid payments to districts, special ed licensure, and feasibility studies for consolidation um, of grades or, or grade sharing. Mm. So I don't know if anyone has any insight on 
It's a broad list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really it really ran the gamut. Yeah. All right. That was it. Any other comments? Additions, legislative things of note? Okay. Then we will move on to public and student comment. Nothing. We have nothing. Let's move to item five then, our NEOLA policies for review. All right, I will start that conversation. Um, so you can see in the, uh, in the doc we have the full list of, of draft policies, all the series. We have the overview of the board questions, suggestions, comments, <coughs> and, and the reactions to those and a couple of, uh, of newer policies that we didn't get on but the, the board members had questions about. Before we get to those, uh, I do want to introduce Mr. Tim Bannock, who's here. He is our NEOLA representative. And, uh, yep, and... So uh, he's who we have to thank for all this stuff. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To verify. Do you all have your tomatoes? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm just a <laughs> no, it, it's all good. Excuses, <laughs> excuses. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Tim is going to be our, our representative, uh, you know, at least twice a year we'll see him, uh, or at least we'll see him, you know, at, we'll, we'll work out the, the process. Um, but I wonder, Tim, do you want to um, maybe talk a little bit about you know, like we had, we had pulled up a resolution. Do you want to kind of speak to, you know, the process moving forward and any any info you think the board might want to hear? Certainly. First of all, uh, any of you that are veterans, uh, happy Veterans Day, and uh, my hat's off to all of you if you are uh, through your service for a country, to our country. So, yes, uh, with the NEOLA Policy Service, you uh, have worked very, very hard as a board and as an administrative staff to look at these templates that we have, compare them with your current policies, and then also try to figure out what's best for Wausau, the Wausau School District. And as uh, Dr. Hiltz has had explained to me the process that you went through, it appears you certainly took this uh, as a very serious and uh, serious and challenging endeavor and did some, some wonderful work. So what happens next is that you will have a resolution which uh, I provided a template for the district which you could use if you would like a different uh, version you certainly can do that but we did provide a, a sample adoption resolution which, which essentially does two things in one resolution it will um, it, it accept or adopt the new policies and at the same time or simultaneously it will rescind the current policies that you have. So in one one stroke, uh, or one uh, uh, adoption, you can uh, have all of that at once. So that would be the legal matter that you would have to take place. And once that is done, then those new policies will become the law of the, of the school district, so to speak. Then, starting in January, we expect that our first update, policy update, will be coming out. So I will likely be calling Dr. Hills to set up an appointment sometime in late January through, could be even April, to uh, go over usually 35 to 45 different policies that our school attorneys have found need some updating. And then <clears throat> we will then take the new language, merge that with your current active language, and then there will be some decisions to be made because our school attorneys will actually put parentheses where there will be options. So just like you did in the drafting process, you'll put an X for those options that you would want. For that language that you do not choose, we would strike through. And typically, school districts will have the superintendent and myself and you know, it could be a board member, it could be anybody else, it doesn't have to be anybody else, but uh, when we're done with our meeting, which is usually about two hours, then in board docs, there will be a recommendation of all those different options that will be coming to you. And then, of course, you have that opportunity to uh, debate that and decide whether or not you want to take those recommendations or if you'd like to make changes. And then, typically, you have a first reading, 
and a second reading, which would lead to a, a formal uh, adoption process of those changes. <coughs> and that cycle would repeat itself in another six months. So every six months, we meet, we meaning uh, the Neil <coughs> Associates, we meet our civil attorneys, they tell us what they have found when they scour the different state and federal laws. And uh, then there are recommendations that are made, and uh, they then put it in draft form and send it out to us, and it goes back and forth several times. It's a process for us, too. And then finally, we contact our school districts, who are clients in the OLA, and we say, okay, the next update is ready. It's being released on such and such a date, and here's how you can find it. And then shortly thereafter, I would be contacting uh, the school district to set up an appointment. Okay. Any questions on the policy cycle once, <coughs> once you are done with uh, the formal adoption resolution and then how the updates no. proceed after? Tim, do you mind if I just... So we had spoken last week at our workshop that the timeline was going to be and a final review tonight and like a special meeting on November 25th, right, to, to do the changeover. Um, after further consideration of that and, and looking at the, the 885 pages of, of policies, I just thought it'd be prudent. There is no rush knowing that uh, the next update doesn't come out till January, February, March-ish, that uh, we'll just approve, if, if it's okay with the board, we'll just approve, do the, the official changeover on December 9th at a regular meeting as we would normally. So then November 25th is just a, a regular old ed ops meeting. Um, is that agreeable? Mm -hmm. yeah, that okay. works. Okay. And Cassie, did you want to pull up that, that resolution that Tim was referring to just so you can... not sure what that was. Did it disappear? There is a, an adoption resolution template mm -hmm. that uh, also has lines on it for school board member signatures if you would like to take that signed document of the resolution, you could actually put that <coughs> into your policy, your active policy <coughs> site, so that anyone from the public that is going in to look at your policies could see, okay, here's the adoption resolution that the board uh, went through in a formal approval process, and the actual individual members who signed off on it. So that's something that would be your option as far as having that there nestled with the policies. Uh, the Clintonville School District is one of the latest clients that I work with that like that idea, and um, they have that. So we were going to just share that with you so you can see what that looks like. You don't remember where we found that, do you? It wasn't under, oh no, it was under board, wasn't it? We did a search with policies. Wow. Thank you. At least it's intuitive for the public. Can't find it. <laughs> Shoot, they want it. <laughs> you think you'd want that front and center? Is this a good time to ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, when you have this resolution where you're accepting the new and then you're deleting the old at the same time, what happens when things don't match up? Like if we have a policy that there isn't a counterpart for in NEOLA, do you have to make sure you consider that ahead of time? And how do you assign a number to that if you decide as a district to keep it? I think we have that already, Cassie. I think you were talking about that earlier, that there are some policies marked as TBD to be determined mm -hmm. in terms of a number being assigned to it from the NEOLA production office. Okay. There is a sense of uh, a strategy, so to speak, in, in order with a numbering system. Okay. So uh, we don't allow clients to make their own numbers, but you can make whatever policy content that you would like, and you could even change the titles from what we have as a title. Mm -hmm. So. And then yes. you assign it a number for us. Correct. So getting back to your initial question, we would just uh, copy and paste your current policy onto an empty template, and then we would ask the production office to assign a number to it. Perfect. Okay. And I believe that's in in the... Uh, we have five drafter. to be determined. Um, we transferred over the library selection policy, which was 6215. 
The only thing I left off was the um, appendixes. Okay. Um, so that is already in there. And then we brought over the music selection policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what number that was. And also the trademark licensing policy. And those three should be at the very bottom of the 855 pages. Mm -hmm. And I think there might be one or two. Timber sales. Timber sales, yes. There's one or two kind of sprinkled at the bottom of each of the series, whatever they'd be assigned to. Like timber Perfect. sales was in uh, finance, I think. Yes, at the bottom of finance. Mm -hmm. So that things where we know where they would go in the series, we put them at the bottom and they're to be determined, whatever number it is. So Perfect. I think to be about five that we brought over that Neola didn't have. Okay, that sounds good. That answers my question. Before we ask content questions, if there are some, um, this is the resolution that Tim was referring to. You can see this is what the, uh, the, the, the policy site will look like. Um, to the public. To the public, yeah. Um, so <laughs> typically it's bylaws and then all down to the 9,000s. This is that adoption resolution that this particular district chose to include here along with, um, you can see that the board, oops, let me go over here. The, uh, the board members in this case chose to, all right, move over here. Stop it. There we go. Chose to sign off on these. So this would be, you know, kind of a cover page, if you will, sure. for the entire policy manual, if that's something the board's interested in doing. What do you guys think about that? Does that get updated every time there's an update of policies, or is that just for the first, first I chunk? I assume it's the first time, correct? This is the adoption resolution, which is for the big mass okay. of adopting everything and rescinding your current. So okay. it would not be for the updates later. Okay, okay. I think it's important that we have that document. I think yeah. it is to be clear to the public then what we did. Who did this? <laughs> <laughs> it is possible to, to to drop that after a number of years have gone by if you feel that uh, I mean if the board is represented by all different players or many different uh, members that is an option you can always uh, take that out mm -hmm. all of the other policies you know everything is still in effect mm -hmm. all right so questions about process, um, otherwise we can move to, if, if board members have content, questions or suggestions. Anything else, Tim, as far as process or? I don't think so with the policy. I mean, you are getting near the end, near the finish line, so that's gonna be exciting for you. <laughs> you yeah, like many levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Does the board have questions on, you know, anything from Monday or I guess any policies at this point? I do. Mm -hmm. um, I gave everybody a copy of the current <coughs> selection of library materials policy just because there wasn't a counterpart to that in NEOLA. And I felt that this was a really robust, well done policy. Um, I haven't looked at the appendixes as far as thinking about how those would, if they're not part of it. I assume that the form is, would be an administrative guideline then? Because that's one of the appendixes is the form for Certainly reconsideration of library mm -hmm. materials. Mm -hmm. um, I won't ask you to make any decision on this today because I want people to have a chance to read it, but um, it really lays out um, the care and thought that goes into selecting materials for the school district and what happens if someone objects to a library book, for instance. And I think. Um, it gives us cover that we have this really well thought out reconsideration process. There is also a policy um, for selection of um, instructional material, not library material, that's separate. It's not this robust. It doesn't have this many details in. And uh, I would ask people to think about whether or not we want to make that a little more specific or more robust because I know that there's a lot of thought that goes into the instructional materials that we use in our school district too. I think back to when we were talking about the new math adoption and 
how the people on that committee did a book study and they um, visited other schools and all of those things. Now, maybe we don't need that in a policy. Maybe uh, administration thinks that that's covered by the processes they have. But there's some um, confidence in knowing that if someone objects to something, here are the steps that we're going to go through. They're logical, they're fair, and we're not going to remove something because of the complaint. We're going to go through this really thoughtful process of reconsideration. Question, Beth? Uh, yeah. you, so we've, we've got the uh, proposed policy for library material, selection of library materials. You said there's also one for instructional materials. Was that a current Wausau policy or a NEOLA policy you were referring to? Well, there's two. The Wausau School District one is 6216, and yep. the NEOLA one is 2521. I haven't studied them intensely, mm -hmm. but I just thought maybe we should take a look at those before next month. But the thing that this led to was when we were talking about the complaint process last time on, on Monday, the 4th, um, that's policy 9130. And, um, you know, we went through these so quickly that sometimes I just wasn't quick enough. And here's one where we changed something under, um, on page 829 of this policy, 9130. Um, there's a question that says the material in question and it was listed as may not be and we changed it to may be Temporarily withdrawn from use pending final resolution of the matter And I'm not comfortable with that and it disagrees with our library selection policy And I realize this might not be in relation to a library book But I feel like if something is in question and somebody complains about it it stays until it goes through the process. I feel like a parent would always have the option to restrict a, a material from their own child, but not from everyone else in the whole district. That could I shut down that. instruction. And um, the reason why I gave you a printed copy of the library selection policy is I felt like it was really very ordered in, here's the process we're gonna go through. And if you've ever been through something like that, where someone objects to a certain material for a reason, there is a lot of emotions involved, and a community can really get caught up in that. And I think having the protection of a really good policy that lays things out properly and also gives, I wouldn't want to be the principal that is getting a complaint from a parent and it rests with me to make the decision. I would want that cover of, mm -hmm. you know, here, here's the form you fill out. Did you read the material in its entirety? Here's the process we're going to go through. And you might not even make it through yeah. the whole process before somebody, it gets resolved. I thought we so, were talking about not not a book in the library, but rather um, actual materials being used in the classroom. But I feel the same about that. I, I think we are don't. talking about materials in this classroom. Yeah, so, so that one I, I disagree with you on only because if, if somebody present something to a classroom and if the principal and the superintendent and everybody thinks this is not appropriate for you to be showing this to these second graders, it shouldn't stay in that second grade classroom until we have a board meeting. If well, it's something, I mean think of just, you know, think of the worst thing you can think of, something just outlandish that there has to be some ability to say, well, wait a minute, we're not going to use this in that classroom right now. We've got to look into this. If it was protected by the material selection policy and it went through that proper procedure, if somebody just went down to family but, video that's what and I'm brought that's, in a video, that's, what I'm saying, that's yeah. different. That's, but that's what I'm saying. I, I, I don't I agree if I'm with wrong, you there. but I'm assuming not every single thing that a teacher presents to the class has gone through some sort of process think, like that they may just have a book so, that they think is so a couldn't the language be adjusted to reflect that that if it has gone through this process right. and someone objects down the road then it's going right. to stay until we go through the reconsideration process however some for lack of a better word rogue piece of instructional material is brought in that hasn't gotten through the process then there is the ability to pull that until a proper review can be done. See, I, well, that, I would be comfortable with that. Well, that's essentially what it's saying in F, right? The material in question may be temporarily withdrawn from use pending final resolution of the matter. 
may be it's withdrawn. It right. also it may, was, it may give us the option. Right. It gives us yeah. right so to And yeah. we can have the exception to whatever this policy is assigned, that anything that falls within this policy, that policy isn't. They're, they're separate and distinct. So we I, can make that clear. I feel like that guidelines for min matters regarding instructional materials I think should be referred back to the two selection pol policies, the one for instructional and the one for library materials. And it shouldn't be part of this complaint policy because then you've got things in two different places that might not agree with each other. You know what I'm saying? And I think if something is so egregious that it shouldn't be shown, then we're talking about possibly a disciplinary matter. I mean, what could And until that's resolved, the policy, if it wasn't changed, would say it doesn't make a difference. You can't take it out. Well, I just think this whole part at the end here, starting with guidelines for matters regarding instructional materials, shouldn't even be part of 9130. I feel like that should be part of the materials selection policy for either instructional materials or library materials. And in those policies, you could beef those up to say, if it's something somebody brought in on their own and it's not part of the curriculum, then a principal could remove it, make a decision to remove it until. Because that still gives our, the, the teachers broad discretion on what they can bring in. And they're it, professionals. It, they exactly, know. That's, I, I don't want to restrict mm -hmm. that just right. in case of one, you know. So as, as long as, I would be fine with that as long as it still supports that ability to. Is there anybody else that feels like these guidelines for matters regarding instructional materials is like repeating what's already in these other <coughs> policies and maybe we should go well, back I, to the other two policies well, instead? Well, I, well, you can either make a reference back to them or because if a member of the public has a concern, it'd be really good for them to be able to find everything in one place. And it's just a matter of us making sure that all the policies are consistent with each other. But I don't think we want to send a me member of the public looking at two, three, four different policies, depending on what they're what they're trying to go after. <coughs> so in this instance, if a parent had a question about something that was being presented in mm -hmm. their classroom, <coughs> they would follow what policy? 90. 9130, I would yeah. assume, is where they would start you when know, they do a word search. And I assume that's where it would take them. Yeah, okay. remember these are searchable, right? So if a parent has a question, that's a really nice feature. They could just put in, um, if they have a complaint or right. structural right. materials, it'll pull up everything that, that has to do with that, with that topic. So just to, I, I think this is definitely critical that we have this because um, of the amount of thought that goes into this process. But my question is if we can format it so that it looks like the other policies. Because when we bring in our own policies, they look very distinct with the bullet points. They don't have the clear ABC um, headings, but just so that it conforms to the, the rest of the policies. I don't know if this should go to Keith or directly to Paul, but uh, you know, there's a great variety in instructional materials. There's like the textbook adoptions that we do that go through a long process and we would be very unlikely to remove anything that anybody had objection to after that process. There's also the things that teachers just choose on the fly the hour before the lesson and that, that freedom has to be there because otherwise they just can't operate it at maximum efficiency. Um, so do you, do, you, do you think that we need different Procedures or some or some note of that distinction as we you know as we put this forward so that people understand that you know if it's something like a textbook adoption they're not likely to get make any headway until it goes like all the way to the board but if it's just something a teacher chooses and it seems to be a problem that's you know that that we're not entirely behind that selection, then it can be very quickly resolved. And there might be some some need for making that distinction in the policies. That, does that so make sense? So a distinction of supplementary material versus? Versus, right, whatever we call the other. Core material. <laughs> core material. And since we have more time, I guess I'd like to have input from the librarians or the on formatting or the secondary education people and elementary education people. What would you recommend that gives you cover and 
it doesn't mean somebody can walk in, complain about something, and get it pulled off the shelf or pulled out of the classroom on a whim. I mean, you guys have dealt with this. Well, not on a whim, but just to avoid trouble, because that happens. I mean, not necessarily here, but right. But it does happen, so they complain. So you, you find a fix just to get past the problem. We don't want that happening either. That gives principals cover. I wouldn't want to be the principal who's make a decision when somebody's complaining. If it's that controversial, I would I would think that the principal would be talking with uh, the director of secondary right. education or someone else in the leadership team. And if and and if there was a, I can see a situation potentially. I doubt that it would happen, but potentially where there was a huge, uh, a larger reaction where it would be re reasonable to say we're going to review this and we're going to hold it temporarily. A temporary hold wouldn't necessarily mean that we're going to take it off forever. It just right. mean that we're going to review it and... and Turn the heat down a little bit. And okay, that's right. So yes. what, what are we asking for? Yeah. I guess I'm still I'm confused now. So this is our current library selection stuff. And that is incorporated... Where is it, Cassie? In the two just doesn't have any Oh, at the bottom. Yeah. It sounds okay. like we're asking for different <laughs> formatting on that. Yeah. And I just checked, um, Neola can do the formatting. Okay. If we just ask them to do that. Okay. So they can make out know, fonts and okay. whatever. So let's yeah. assume, all right, so 6215 gets put in with a number in the right format. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then what, I mean, are we missing something else, Beth? Or are you suggesting we add something? Or? I would like um, administration to have a chance to look at policy 9130 and to see how it would dovetail nicely with that one if it was a library material and also to have a chance to look at the instructional materials policy which is 2521 mm -hmm. to just make sure these all agree with each other and see what you think is best and come back with recommendation for next month does that make we sense we can certainly do that we have reviewed those and you'll okay. see a lot of the uh, a lot of the recommendations in there were made by someone in the ed department, uh, or maybe, okay. maybe it was a team effort. Um, and it would be the same with 2521. Um, so the the one thing that was changed in 9130 was going from uh, may not be removed to may be removed. And that was a conversation we had on at the fourth, on the, we're at the workshop. Is that the one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, and we, and we brought back section G, which was about Oh, the feedback loop. You had mentioned that we hey, there's no directive in here to go back to the person filing the, the complaint or the question. So G was a yes, we will get back to them within I think 15 days or something. Okay. Yeah. But so, like, if they object to um, material use in the classroom, does it go through that rigorous process of review, like? The library book process? Right, it would be the 9130 process, whatever is there for instructional materials. And is that one a. I don't that see that one outlined. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, it's got you know, the first level, second level, third level. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Is that what you're referring to, Beth? Yeah. I guess I'm not so sure that that is the same process used for a library book. Should it be? I don't know. Okay. But we can go back and take a look. See, let's take a look at those three policies and make sure they all work, that they're consistent and work well together. Yeah, right? that's what I'm and it, it would make three. some sense to not have the exact same um, procedure for a book that is in the library available for use versus mm -hmm. a material oh, yes. that's actually mm -hmm. required to be used in the classroom. Like you're in, you're in the captured audience classroom. I agree. You know, I, Things are Agreed. two different things. For that reason, and also the vetting process is different. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the incidents that make the headlines that I can remember are those second in the classroom. Yeah. Where you're reading a book right. aloud yeah. to a group and they yeah. don't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. So can can we just for clarity have in 9130 just a clear line that says library selection policy and reconsideration shall be governed by policy whatever it's assigned? That way, it's clear that it's distinct. It's it's a different process. It's not within this one. Yes. Once we get that policy number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that work? Yep. Thank you. Good. Okay. Where to from here on these? Are there other 
questions about any other policy drafts? Well, I still have concerns about the voting one. And I, it's just like I sent to you, how many people can call in? How many can we set up for? And you told me four. So we can have up to four people gone? Right. Technology would allow for up to four people to be on a, uh, for up to four board members to call in. And then the other thing was when the president is gone and calling in, they're not going to be running the meeting because it would be too difficult via telephone. So we have to have, and I think this stuff needs to be spelled out. Do you know which policy that was, Jean? Zero. It's, yeah, zero it's one, with zero the zero definitions. <laughs> zero what? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. Yeah, the new one. Okay. That's the first one. Okay. And the other one that I have issue with that I haven't even brought up because I know I'm the only one on the board that feels that way is the one about um, the drills we put our students through. And that's why I wouldn't be able to sign that because I cannot approve that. You know, going back to the earlier one, Tricia, do you remember what the wording is? We worked through that last year. When the president is absent, is that the term? Then the vice president shall assume the duties. Yeah, there was a... Right. Yes. And absent means yeah. not present, and by phone means not present. No, because so it would now count it as a present. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes sense to be present if you're going to run the meeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for PRL, it would be different. Um, so, I, I mean, Jane, I, I appreciate it, but I don't think it's that big of a concern. I just, for purposes of the people in the room, uh, common sense would seem to dictate that somebody should be present. If you're on the phone, you can't gauge what's happening in the room and see, is this the time I can pipe in? Of course, I understand that, but I feel that way about everybody calling in. But I think it just should be spelled out so that it's clear that we've thought about it and we understand that that's the way do you, it be. Do you have draft language? Because we could, or I mean, we have until next month, we can put some clarity in about these concerns. I don't have anything written out now, no. Well, Keith, you all could give something written out pretty easily, I would think. It's about one sentence. Yeah, that you're, that, that if, you're, if, you're, if you're attached via media, you're here, you're present for purposes of quorum and voting, but not for chairing the meeting. For chairing the meeting. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah. Yeah, and I just have to determine if it goes into the voting or if it's a separate location, but we could find an yeah. appropriate location for that. Mm -hmm. Do we have to have like a lone survivor clause too? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. So, yeah, so we can adjust survivor. that. It's down in the basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can adjust that. Now, Jane, when you talk about drills, that what, are you referring to the active shooter drills? Yes. Okay, so I, I take a bit of issue with you saying that you're the only one with concerns. I've documented my concerns as well and even considered, you know, what I want my son to participate in at school. Um, so there certainly are concerns. What What is the concern that you have with policy? I, I think we can cover the legal necessity because now there's a law that we have to have um, drills. And we have... We have fire drills, which take our students out of the building, and I think we make a mistake by just doing it the same way every time. I think we should have people that occasionally go into the building and say to the kids coming down the hall, you can't come this way, there's a fire this way, and the teachers have to take them out a different way. And the other one is we have for sheltering in places for tornadoes, and with that one we can say to the kids, well, the tornado is coming from that direction, we have to move to a different room. That covers the scenarios for active shooter getting them out of the building and moving to a different place. We don't need to traumatize them with the whole shooter drill because kids do get traumatized. My doctor said her her daughter was horribly upset after the Wassa West one. Was the first one. So is there used. a policy that's directing them? What well, policy yeah, is there? The, the first two points to me, and I, I agree with what you're saying, right? But to me, that's an implementation of of that policy. The there's, policy? there's a fire drill. Well, I'm going to rely if it's me, I'm going to rely on the experts who are going to say, yeah. this is how you should administer a fire drill. Here's the different scenarios you should throw out there. So to me, I, I don't know that that's a policy issue so much as it, but, how are you guys going to implement it? But there is, we do have a policy in here, and I don't have the number because there's a oh, lot 84, of them. Um, is that um, 
we're required by law to have these drills where we drill kids and how to get out of the building and how to shelter in place. And we have those covered and we would save time and I mean classroom time if we just made sure that we covered everything in those two drills that we already have. So right. what's in the policy though that's objectionable as opposed to you know, how the practice? It's that we're having drills and we're <laughs> calling them. I don't think we call them active shooter drills, do we? No. What, what's we the do do number? at the fire department. They come in and have them go out different ways. Okay. We do all of those things. Oh, because I've never, never mm -hmm. seen that. And oh. that must be fairly new that they're doing that then. Which is good. Yeah, and I guess from a, if the policy related to active shooters is. But we don't have a policy for yeah, active shooters. Yeah, that's, that's what I was, I was trying to recall. It, the school safety. I mean, this okay. is the only one that would address that, you know, school safety. It's the only one I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. Me as well. Because it's, I mean, it says mm -hmm. that that a plan will be developed. So mm -hmm. it sounds more like you have an objection to what the actual plan is, as opposed to what the policy says. Yeah, and I, I guess. So the 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 question, Jane, I guess that you have is, do we need a separate? exercise devoted to a shooter situation <laughs> versus a fire and or a tornado. Yes. Is that okay? okay. And I the kids should not be involved in thinking about someone coming into the building and shooting at them. Well, and I I got to disagree on that because um, it's reality. Yeah, I mean like it or not. They're more likely to get hit by lightning. I mean that's how actual no, it is. I, I understand that, but then the question would be that why do we do a fire drill, right? They're more likely to get hit by lightning. When, when's the last time a school fire? But I'm saying we news? already do those drills. Let's just keep it to the two drills that we have well, I, because they I will cover everything. But it still takes me back to this policy doesn't require anything other than the creation of a plan. So it sounds like that's a different discussion. Yes. A separate from adopting the policy. The pol this policy doesn't require. So, so I yes. guess you're either asking for the board to approve the plan, or you're asking for another policy to set limitations on the plan. If I might, um, can you speak to sure. what are our requirements for those? Act 143 tools? requires schools to conduct at least one annual drill in the proper response to a school violence event mm -hmm. and submit a brief written summary, which you guys will be getting at the end of this month from all of our schools. Um, and I was at the West of West drill. I've been at all of them. Um, and at no point, they're just discussions. There's no drill happening where they're running or there's crazy traumatic things happening, it's literally a discussion in their classrooms. There have been a couple where they've evacuated, mm -hmm. um, but it's done, it's not like run for your lives, it's here's that's, the spot we can go out. It's not role playing and it's sound not effects. The trauma playing. comes it's in, the not. trauma comes in as, as we're telling kids that this could happen and, and you have to it. you have to respond in this way and you have to, and, and they shouldn't. Uh -oh. They shouldn't even be discussing it. But it isn't that what we're telling them with a fire drill? This could happen to you. You could. Yeah. The building could get hit by a tornado. To me, we're trying to prepare them, not just physically. Where do you exit the building, but also mentally. But, I, and I, it's unfortunate. I, I, I feel bad for your physician's child who was impacted by that. But frankly, I, if there were thirteen other thirteen hundred other students that benefited from it. I'm not inclined so to see. So it's okay to give some kids PTSD? If, if the impact of preparing an entire school for an event like that is that a, a child walks out of there with PTSD, but you have 1,300 who are more prepared, yeah, I think that's a decision I would make. But there... Well, and that's, that, that's an extreme sort of an example. PTSD is a little more profound than, than, a, than a kid being upset because this is a fact of life. We just had a shooting at the cemetery. But two years ago, we had a shooting in a law office. These things happen with increasing frequency. Mm -hmm. so. we, the, the kids need to understand that this is a part of life, and they're going to have to learn to deal with it. And I think we have a professional staff that can do it sensitively. There, I think there's another side, side to that, too, and that is that the kids all know about this stuff anyway. I mean, it's, it's 
public information. It's happening all the time. If they have the sense that there's somebody out there that's concerned about them and they're setting up a program to protect them, to me that that's a much more positive thing than to just have a suddenly have some kind of an episode like the shooting in the law office. This is right in the community where they had to lock down some of the schools and things and then have people reacting out of terror because they don't know what's going on. It seems to me there's a protective element of saying this is why we <coughs> to protect you so you will have some security. You don't have to worry about it. So but much. we're adults and we can understand that. So Elementary kids getting can. back to the policy, the law says that we have to have a plan and we have to yes. submit it. So yes. what is objectionable about a policy that says that we're going to have to have a plan and submit it? Drill. And a drill. Um, we're legally yeah, right. required. Mm -hmm. I have to submit that every year before January. But it first. doesn't say it has to be a separate deal. And, ne and neither does this policy. Okay. So that that's what that's you know this is a mm -hmm. policy meeting about this policy and it has All right. it's okay. just you know what I mean it's not it's not what the actual right. plan is that right. would be a separate board meeting. So I'm not hearing okay. any recommendation to alter the policy in any way. So we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. Other other questions about other. Otherwise, the um, yeah, the um, nursing mother one that got sent today. I think the language for support staff got carried over to professional staff. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Price yeah. for that. And and it sh I really think it should be two years and not one year of nursing. It's probably um, FLSA language, I'm guessing. But that's um, just the minimum. We can go beyond that. Right. I do agree with that. I I no agree problem. with that. It would do no harm to if you say want to. two. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you with that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know the number offhand, sir? Um, well, it's the one that was the. It's, it's a nursing mother. Just as now. Uh, 3,000. It just gives people a little more. I don't see the number. It, yeah, it's 4,000 yeah. for the for mm. teachers. Oh. Mm. Right. So it's a 41. It was 44.30.05. Right. And I'm assuming it's going to be assigned the same number except the 3,000. Do you happen to know that? So we have a 44.30.05 that we want to apply to some, uh, professional staff. Mm -hmm. Will it have the 34.30.05? It may have a different number. It may. I, yeah. I can't say. We have to put a TBD right. on it. Okay. Um, but I'm hearing a recommendation to, to extend these to two years. That's fine. Is that a... Yeah, or, or okay. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. When this is all said and done, will we be able to search these <coughs> on our website, type in a word, and it'll bring it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's that's easy to right. find stuff. I've tried it with the rest, and I yeah. can find stuff right away. Good. Yes. All right. Anything else on these? So we'll bring them back. Uh, they'll be old business at the Ed Ops. They'll be, and then we'll go for approval on December 9th if the board is ready. Okay. So we don't need any action uh, yes. on, on these, on the whole? Right? We'll bring yeah. them all back to, yeah. yes, to the December 9th. Okay. So we'll defer this <coughs> until December 9th. We want to move, uh, if we want to move them forward. <coughs> Take oh, action. we have to have a, if we need a, a motion to move them forward to December 9th. No, no, no. To the well, to the full board, to the, that meeting, we need a motion. We don't. It, it's a, you know we're we're agendized for a motion to move it to the full board. Yes. yes. I don't think we need a motion to move it to keep it within this committee, unless you want a motion to table. No, this would move to the full board for December nine. Okay. Right? So, so we're ready to go for the full board. Okay, then we do. Doesn't mean we can't make edits. But yeah. Oh, okay. We've got a month to. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, then I will ask for a motion to recommend to the full board the approval of the NEOLA policies as presented. So moved. Second. First and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And with that, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Motion carries. We are adjourned.